Welcome to InfoCenter's video series. In this video, we'll provide an overview of some of the exciting new features of IT service management in ServiceNow's latest release, San Diego. InfoCenter is the leading and fastest growing ServiceNow Elite Partner. Stay tuned to learn more about how InfoCenter can help your company maximize its ServiceNow investment. Now, let's explain what ServiceNow releases really mean. About twice a year, ServiceNow announces the newest release on their platform. In Q2 of 2022, the San Diego version was made available to customers. Each version of ServiceNow is named after a city in alphabetical order. Previous versions to San Diego include Rome and Quebec. With San Diego comes many new and enhanced features that will break down for you now. And for more information on new features across the platform, check out the blog in the video description and our released YouTube playlist for more videos like this one. Now, let's learn about ITSM in San Diego. I've been doing ServiceNow for a shade under a decade here, and I'm here to talk about ITSM today and some of the new exciting features uh, that are coming out in San Diego. Um, so as everybody knows, ITSM is ServiceNow's oldest running app and the bread and butter for IT services and support for the rest of the organization. In San Diego, we can break everything down uh, in, into four areas with perhaps uh, some overlaps expected on the Venn diagram. So first is net new features. We've got uh, um, <clears throat> we've got the the uh, service operations workspace, which is the next generation of the ITSM workspace. We have digital portfolio management, uh, which allows you to view and manage all your services, uh, your offerings, and business applications in a single pane of glass. We have the on-call scheduling integration enhancements now, uh, with new functions to further expand your om omni-channel engagement opportunities. And then we have recommendation framework to enable better issue resolution and it's much easier, more friendly and prescriptive in that manner. As far as improvements in facelifts go, we now have an incident best practice plugin um, and it's helpful because it uh, uh, bellies some of the concerns and, and actually is granting you now with some of the overdue features for incident and problem management. Um, that requ get requested quite a bit in the field, but uh, don't act. But now we have an official manifestation of that. As far as facelifts are concerned, uh, workforce optimization for ITSM is is now being rolled out along with other workforce optimization tools, and we're deprecating some of the old legacy um, exploring workforce optimization tools. Similar name, different sort of experience. Same with vendor management workspace. We're getting rid of the old vendor manager workspace, and now there's something called vendor management, which is, has better integration across the product suite with things like service portfolio management, contract management, asset management, contract ma um, SLA contracts, vendor risk management, all that, all that good stuff. And then finally, <clears throat> with the walk-up experience, we've got some expansion there with some nice remote work features. On the modernization side here, um, so the future is beyond, um, uh, UI 16. Now we have something called the Next Experience UI um, coming out with this release, um, and we've got better responsive dashboard displays for many of the overview and premium dashboards that, that folks are familiar with using in incident management, change management, service desk management, things like that. And then an overall improved uh, major incident workbench experience as well. So it's worth noting if you're a longtime ServiceNow user, some of these plugins are not pre-activated um, unless you had a fresh instance. Uh, but there are steps to decommission the old plugins and workflows outlined by ServiceNow. Um, and, 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 you know, starting there, we could help um, certainly roll out some of these next generation features. Okay, so we have um, ITSM Service Operations. Uh, the first call out here is the landing page. Um, so Service Operations Workspace is a replacement for older ITSM Workspace. Um, as with many of ServiceNow's brand new features, it's helping to bridge the old silos and divides for uh, functions and perspectives uh, within your IT organization. Uh, it offers a host of new features to expedite the speed to value for ITSM. So it's got the brand new landing page experience. It does a better breakdown of your incident catalog task assigned queues and does a great job of flagging items front and center, such as things like P1s at risk of breach, uh, SLAs at risk, um, orphan incidents that aren't being updated in a timely manner, and things like FCR, time to resolution and handle time as well. Um, and we finally now, uh, with, within the internal fulfillment side of the app, actually have announcements, uh, something that was previously available, you know, within uh, your customer visibility perspective from Portal, um, or your end user visibility rather, but now you've got it on the fulfillment side within Service Operations Workspace. And it's also leveraging Learning Core, uh, so you can adopt and see learning tasks that have been set up and supplied. 
So if you have integration with a third party LMS through HR service delivery, you've got learning tasks that you now have the ability to um, complete and it's all within that pane of glass. So within service operations workspace, the workspace context itself. Um, so it's, <clears throat> it's moved toward a better contrast with your panes, buttons and divider blocks on the page. Um, you can see just from that screenshot, um, you know, that it's overall subtle changes, right? Uh, but, but hopefully that experience is a lot better to work in. Um, and I, I think it looks better personally and, and, and I, I'm sure many of you will as well. Um, so also within it, to support your peers, you can now collaborate directly over Microsoft Teams by launching it from your contextual side menu pane there. Um, and then a number of different apps across ITSM more than ever before are now within that realm of visibility for Surface Operations Workspace. So all your standard ITSM, the ability to manage your on-call uh, scheduling queue and calendar, you know, walk up experience items and tasks, and then functions of you know some of the other rollouts here like workforce optimization. Um, also there is recommendation framework. So it's actually using improved natural language understanding functions to help identify and tailor um, more nuanced recommendations than ever before. And then you've got the ability to consider them before applying them um, and then uh, um, and, and actually have some exert some manual influence over it as well you can actually set up recommendation rules in the system to kind of help float uh, some of those more preferred recommendation paths based on what experience you're getting with your incident. And for workforce optimization for ITSM there, the legacy app uh, is being deprecated. Um, this app is great. It's, it's gonna analyze commonalities across agents complete a work queue. Um, it helps actually predict and recommend skills at the individual level, but it also helps you forecast for um, lacking skills and lacking commitment areas that are of interest to the greater organization. So you can actually see certain skills that you may uh, uh, need general overall improvements on. Um, and if lack, of, <clears throat> if lack of skill is the issue there, uh, then you can create coaching opportunities through the coaching uh, opportunities app to manage and track improvements there to individual self, uh, provided that they meet those preconditions to, 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 you know, to track with that improvement. Um, and then of course, each of these areas have dedicated landing pages. So digital portfolio management. So there's better lifecycle management under this. Uh, it's a brand new app on the platform. Um, and this product's now actually helping to bridge the old silos and divides between operational activities of ITSM and, and the long-term growth of strategic initiatives um, where you manage your strategic initiatives and projects for things like strategic portfolio management, which Hunter will talk about in just a moment. So from left to right, ServiceNow is applying a better system of interaction, uh, starting with the plan phase. Um, you, um, you can help plan your roadmap for the services, uh, business applications and products that your organization provides. You can manage your backlog, uh, again, all within the same plane of glass here, um, including the product increments that, you're, that you used to have to manage separately with applications like Agile Development. And then you can consider all product areas and, and organizational demands and, and decide how you want to wire them into your uh, existing roadmap. For the build phase, you can now track processes. Um, <clears throat> you can track like your epics and your sprints that are being performed across your roadmap and actually see them against the milestones that you have for active project engagements within uh, strategic portfolio management. Um, and then any agile changes that affect your business apps or risk your timelines, you've got the chance to consider them and it's just going to hopefully help you enable you make better decisions about what improvement initiatives you want to prioritize. And for the run phase there, so, um, you know, you can monitor your resulting KPIs at uh, the operational level, the work breakdown level, or against your product releases themselves to see how successful those product releases are, uh, how many incidents are being opened, right? What do those KPIs look at, uh, look like over a period of time? Um, and so the whole idea is hopefully we'll be able to spot perceived technology risks there. Uh, so you can decide where the business services, technical services you, you provide and business applications in your organization um, need the most attention. There's actually many different, um, uh, many different visuals uh, across, you know, your different workspaces that are being rolled out. This is just a couple of them. There's a roadmap for sales there and a roadmap for delivery. So you can see how that holistic management uh, is coming into play there. All right, uh, so walk-up experience. The biggest call out here is that uh, with the large remote migrations in recent years, obviously the walk-up experience is increasingly moving virtual as well. Uh, so this now lets you do, um, lets you set up remote appointment bookings. Requesters can submit one or multiple. Agents can book follow-ups to keep that cycle of interaction going. Um, and you can even coordinate and send remote sessions over Microsoft Teams to enable visual, uh, visual collaboration there. Another great call out, uh, hopefully a lot of folks will like this, is, is the kiosk function. Uh, it used to be a heavy pain point, uh, but ServiceNow has 
uh, now within San Diego granted the ability for kiosk engagement and multiple employees to engage through the same kiosk device. So this should help to bypass and, and also belly concerns about network sign-ons and SSOs being a problem there. Um, they've got a way forward here to manage that. So incident management best practice, just a few overdue call outs here. There's a brand new set of resolution codes and including being able to mark that you resolved it um, by a different task within ITSM, a change, a problem, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can create incidents from alerts, MIs or changes without requiring the company or caller now. Um, so it's lifted that restriction, bridged uh, alert um, management, event management and incident management a little bit better there. And then for the assigned to me function now, um, and it's funny, we just had a customer recently ask uh, us to, to customize this feature to work this way, and now it's being rolled out, which is great. But um, the assigned to me function, if you're a part of multiple groups there, you can actually designate the group that you want to affiliate the incident with. And then there's just better increased support for the problem and knowledge integration side to incident. So you can choose a known error and link the problem to the incident through that affiliation, um, or you can choose a known error resolution code to apply to um, to the incident and that will link the known error KVA that exists out there. Um, and there's just a few communication functions there to help you better enable, communicate the workaround and fix for certain problem management things. Um, I do want to note if InfoCenter actually has its own tool called Gemini Document Generator um, that allows a friendly template summary PDF to be attached. So if that was ever something you wanted to distribute to whatever intended, intended party, it's something you could leverage for that. And as far as business stakeholder licenses are concerned, we can allow authorized users to approve, view, and read records. We know that today, but now this improvement here with uh, San Diego is to allow uh, rolled users to actually add comments finally. So with the on-call scheduling um, <clears throat> uh, app that's been around uh, for, for a long period of time now, you can manage your shifts, your time off requests, and then um, your on-call status across your, uh, across your teams there. So there are existing omni-channel functions that were included with SMS and voice call are now being expanded. So you've got Microsoft Teams, you've got mobile push notification enablement finally. Um, and you could use this to escalate uh, at the user or the shift manager level, um, get in touch with those people, those parties, um, particularly in the event of a major outage, right? Um, and, and just have further omni-channel routes really supporting you. And then for ServiceNow voice enablement, this is really a rebranding of some of the apps that came out um, where it says things like Amazon Connect for Cloud Call Center, you might've seen or heard about some of those apps. They're rebranding this just basically ServiceNow voice. Um, but it provides efficient inbound outbound call and outbound call experiences by integrating to various third-party phone systems. Um, so you can display relevant um, data to the agent during the customer interaction and also be able to analyze the transcript of that, uh, the recording and then call metrics, you know, that, that occurred between the agent and caller interaction. Um, and it's cool, the application tags uh, actually every statement within the transcript and adds a sentiment score to it. Um, and obviously if your sentiment score is generated, you can see how well the interaction went by seeing the, the comments that were flagged as, as um, low positivity sent, sentiments, if you will. Um, and so that, hopefully that will become a useful KPI for uh, customer um, satisfaction over a period of time. InfoCenter is solely focused on helping customers plan with Radius, implement and support ServiceNow across the entire platform through our DevShop managed services. InfoCenter's team of certified experts and practitioners provide deep experience across the enterprise within IT, HR, customer service, operations, and security and risk, and all industry verticals. Please visit infocenter.io to learn more about our unique offerings and customer success stories. Thanks for watching.